Hi folks, we've got a double unboxing for you today. We've got the Science Museum Robotics Slitherbot and we've got Zuru Robo Alive Snake. So we're hoping to see how these two compare. And we're going to start with this one, the Zuru Robo Alive Snake. I sliver like a real snake. My tongue flicks continuously. My eyes hunt for prey. Oh, oh that's interesting. Isn't that interesting? Uh, background, yeah. Background. Like cracked yeah. earth, isn't it? On the desert scene. So we've got a uh, oh. nice, mm. nice action. So we've got some quite large wheels on the front, oh, yeah. driving mm -hmm. wheels, mm -hmm. and then we've got some sort of just what what would you gliding say? wheels? Yeah, just sort of like three little wheels. Yeah. Looks nice. Mm. So this is made by Zuru then. Yeah. Play instructions. First, insert two AAA batteries. Changing the batteries. Batteries not included. Press down on the button on the first rung of your snake. Then pull gently on the rest of the body to detach the full tail as shown in the picture. The picture. You press down on this mm -hmm. and that pulls up like that. Yeah. Ah. Neat. Mm. So we're inserting the batteries now as shown in the picture. There we go. Reveals the battery compartment. Mm -hmm. Off switch. It's not supposed to move on carpet, but it's moving really well. <laughs> really good, that. It is, isn't it? Help it over the step, Paul. Oh, 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 oh. oh <laughs> is making some sort of um, something to go in the corner of the room to round the, the corners. Oh, look, it's gone onto there. <laughs> so what do you think of this one, Paul? I like the action. It's, uh, it's all achieved by the, uh, the head mechanism going from side to side. The, the body follows on very nicely. Mm. And, uh, it seems to go okay on carpet. And, mm. um, it looks good, yeah, when it's going on, it looks good. Now I was, uh, I want to do some customising on this, mm -hmm. and I was thinking of repainting it. Yeah, it could be um, a paint scheme, something mm, a bit more vivid, I think, maybe mm. green. And um, I was thinking of like making a skin to go over it, but I don't think that would work because no, we were I'm... talking about silicon, but silicon would grip the fl the yeah, carpet it would, it would or the stop floor it from uh, having that nice snake action. Mm. Mm. So. I think I might just give it a paint job yeah, instead. Be limited to a custom paint job. Yeah. So now it's time to open the Slitherbot. Over 50 centimetres long, articulated tail. Motor with cascade reduction to provide a smooth movement. Piston rod mechanism to move forward. So it's got a connecting rod mechanism driven by an electric motor. And it's entirely jointed body so it can move like a real snake once it's powered the motor drives the connecting rod mechanism which makes the drive wheels under the head perform an oscill oscillating movement from right to left thanks to the oscillating movement transmitted by the head the body made up of 13 jointed modules will cause the slitherbot to move sinuously by slithering 
all over without stopping. So we've got all of these parts to fix together. Wow, that's big! Wow, yeah, this is, it's like it's a similar type mechanism, isn't it? So these all the bits you've got to twist off and uh, click together. Yeah, obviously that's the tail. Mm -hmm. There's um, our little extra wheel things. So mm -hmm. we've got three there. Looks like it's a very similar design to this one. This one's it? got four. Mm. Four sets. It looks like it's got more joints as well, that one, isn't it? True. Yeah, This these are more chunky joints. Mm -hmm. And I've got this lovely uh, manual with it. Oh, yeah. Do these snap off like this? Okay, so now I've got all the parts ordered. So we've got 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. 3A, 3B, and so on and so forth. And so we've gone to the last part, which is the tail 12A and 12B. Assemble the robot's body starting from the head module. Take the two parts of the first module marked with the numbers 1A and 1B, then mount them as shown in the picture, being careful to align the holes and inserting the upper and lower pegs of the head module through the hole as illustrated by the red line. Once the first module has been closed, press it tightly so that no gap remains between the two parts. So you take one A, that goes on there, Those two go through there. Yeah, that was satisfying. Note the half of the module marked with the A will always be the upper half, while the one marked with B will always be the lower half. Continue the assembly by taking the two parts of the second module marked with the numbers 2A and 2B. Then mount them as explained in the previous step. From now on, simply take the pieces marked with the numbers in ascending order. 2A. 3B are shown in the picture. After positioning them in the appropriate, appropriate recess, push them down until they click into to place. Make sure that the wheels turn freely and without any type of hindrance. Perform the same procedure for part 7B and 11B. Continue mounting the parts by following the same order specified above. You can put the snake together first and then snap in the wheels when all 11 modules have been mounted take the tail and assemble it as shown in the picture insert the two screws found in the bag into the tail and tighten them all right so these two points have to connect and these two points have to connect. I'm going to put the screws in. Okay, 
assembled. Installing the batteries, make sure the device is switched off. Remove the cover of the battery beneath the neck. And uh, we've got a picture there showing where the batteries are located. Okay, battery goes there. Maybe the top of the head is it? Ah, oh, oh, there's a switch. So we need to get some batteries, folks, so we can't do a fair comparison. So we're going to leave it there for today and uh, we'll be get back to you when we bought some fresh batteries so we can compare them both properly. So we're going to do a follow up video when our new batteries arrive and we can put fresh batteries in both of the snakes and put, the, put them side by side. But so far, Paul, what do you think? Of the two snakes? Mm -hmm. Um, well, the kit that you've built yourself, um, it's a, it's a bigger snake and it doesn't have as many segments, I don't think, does it? Um, and it didn't seem to move as well in, in that twisty snake manner, but it hasn't got good batteries in, so we're going to have to give it a retest. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it did move the same, I, I think the kit one's more fun. Yes. The kit one's more fun. Uh, although the, the, the finished one is perhaps uh, painted better. But you could always paint the kit one. But definitely more fun, the kit one. Great instructions as well. I mean, you followed it okay, didn't you? Mm. So the kit had really good instructions, didn't it? Lovely and clear. We can't really say about the movement yet until we get the fresh batteries. Uh, the Zuru snake, I think, looks better. So the one that you put together, it's not really made to look like a realistic snake. It's it's made to look like a robotic snake, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, it is. I suppose you could modify it yourself, like you could give it um, new eyes, because it hasn't really got eyes as such. It's just got these pieces of green plastic. So you could do some mods, couldn't you, yeah, to uh, you make it a bit more interesting. Um but it certainly was a lot of fun putting together and we'll do a follow-up video as soon as the batteries come, folks, so that we can put these on side by side. So that's it for this video, folks. Thanks for watching, as always, and see you next time.